absolutely agree. He and Tommy DeLago put on a show in the countdown, and to win the final race, to win the championship, that was spectacular. Gary, we've got some questions for you. You ready? Let's, you know, I think Tommy DeLago needs a new name, Mr. Sack, because he drug his sack up to the starting line every time they ran that car. So that's kind of a, a joke that only Tommy would understand, but Mr. Sack, and I think some of my fans would figure that out and know what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. A sack of what, Gary? Uh, tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> got a large sack of tomatoes he drags around with him there you go all right first question for gary this week from tommy in montana selzy still laughing at you and the rv poop story from your blue man story in war stories are you coming back this year that is if competition plus does it they haven't said anything yet if they do it please come back says tommy in montana as far as i know joe if you'll have me and bobby will have me i'm back i, I love to do this it's it's great fun for me. I love talking about drag racing. I love drag racing. I always will love drag racing, and it's always going to be a part of me. Well, War Stories is one of the best things that CompetitionPlus.com does over the course of the year because it's exactly what I go for on my show is a chance to get behind the scenes and hear the crazy stories that make up these wild personalities. The question is, why haven't you won yet, Gary? God, I don't know. You've got to dig you a know, good one out. I, I've got some stories, but you just never know when to throw the bomb out there. And I guess the way it is nowadays, you better throw the bomb every time. Um, <laughs> some of my stories right now, to be honest with you, Joe, I, I couldn't even tell on HBO. <laughs> Pretty tough situation. So we'll have to work on the war stories. I definitely want to keep doing the sh- as he says though that excellent excellent we'll uh we'll keep it going whenever you got something whenever gary has something on his mind he's gonna let me know and we're gonna do a show folks so right through the off season whenever gary's ready we'll be ready and we'll get something to you all your fans out there all right next one from monty who's outside of st louis where they'll be racing nhra full throttle drag racing next year question is knowing aj the way you do what kind of odds are you putting on the rumor of morgan lucas with Allen next year i would say if Allen abby is back uh, with funding for two cars, I would say slim to none. I don't think that Forrest Lucas will have Morgan running a car that doesn't have Lucas oil all over that car. Um, and, and Alan is kind of unique in the way he picks his drivers. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, unless uh, it's a business decision, I, I don't see it coming back that way. Not that Alan and, and Morgan wouldn't get along. I, I'm not going to say that. But I think Alan likes to run his own program. He doesn't want any influence from anybody else. He does it his way. Obviously, it's successful. Ten world championships. I just I don't see it happen. I, I, unless there's Alan Abbey leaves and Morgan Lucas would bring the Lucas sponsorship over to Alan Johnson and Alan run it, I, I don't see Alan not running his own show ever again. And I don't see him not handpicking who he would like. And I would think if Alan's going to pick a driver, he'd probably bring somebody from the alcohol ranks. Just my opinion. Uh, that's kind of how I was chosen. What about your chance of coming back, Gary? Is this it? Not, not going to happen. All right. I, um, I'm so knee-deep here at Selzy Enterprises now, um, trying to get through this economic downfall, trying to build a business, trying to work with my kids in their racing program. I, uh, the longer I'm away, unfortunately, other than the Manzo offer, that was something that, that really kind of turned me on. I, I just I don't see it happening. Definitely not this year. And I don't, I don't think... If uh, by Indy of this year, if things don't tantalize me, if nothing comes along, which I'm not looking, which doesn't help matters, uh, I don't see me coming back ever. Wow. Well, the Manzo offer is still out there on the table. I spoke with Frank at the finals, and he was uh, he was stoked about it. We laughed for a few minutes how we, we sent a shockwave out there through the world. I think it was more talk than anything, but if Frank did it, um, you know, I would, and there was the funding there, I'd have to look at, you know, to make sure that Frank had some stuff that he could blow up and, and obviously, we'd love to have Tim Richards or somebody there to, to help guide us. But Manzo's a plenty smart guy. And, and I know people said other people have tried, but Manzo's a different breed. He's, uh, he's one in a million, no doubt about it. Final question for Gary this week from Rory in Florida, who says he's a huge fan of the WFO radio show, which is nice. He goes, man, did you hear the mouth on that Kurt Bush fella? How many times have you given a reporter the business, Gary? Never. Did you hear, first of all, did you hear the audio of Kurt Bush? I saw it yesterday. Uh, I was shocked and amazed. And I have to tell you, he and his brother have so much driving talent that it's a shame that they lack that in brains. Tony Stewart is a very close personal friend of mine. So is Clint Boyer. Um, of course, I know Michael Waltrip, and, and I know some of the other guys. Um, Dale Jarrett, who'd been around for a long time. I got to be friends with him when I was with the Winston uh, Bunch. And I don't think anybody that is successful – 
or that makes a large amount of money has the right to treat any human being like that. Let me tell you something. We work for the fans and we work for the sponsors. I don't care what we want to believe or how great we think we are. That is a fantasy world. And when you start treating people in general, especially people in the media like that, you have no respect and you have no, you don't deserve your job. The problem is those guys make extremely large amounts of money. I say those guys, those two goons, I wish that I could be in a room with them and I wouldn't really care the size of them. Um, I shouldn't say it because they're both wimps, but I would like to bitch slap both of them. Uh, and I think they both, you know, Jimmy Spencer obviously leveled Kurt Busch in his car one day for being a smart ass. Thought that might have straightened him out. Obviously, that didn't work. And Kyle Busch, you know, Harvick was going to straighten his attitude out because that's what you do. If you have a problem with another driver, especially in circle track, and I learned this with my kids, not that it's the right thing to do, but when you have someone being an ass like those two guys are, you take them out in the parking lot and you settle it as man. Now, whether you win or you don't win is, is another thing, but you that's how you settle it. But what that guy did to Dr. Jerry Punch was absolutely ridiculous. And if I was Penske, that, that'd be the end of his career. I mean, I don't care how good of a driver you are. There's hundreds of other guys that are as good or better than that would be thankful to be in that position. And I think those guys need a rude awakener. And I think Kyle has got it. I think Joe Gibbs, no matter how he's been around football players, and when you look at that situation, football players, baseball players, basketball players that think they're above the law, and, and they get in bar fights and they rape women and they do these different things with drugs and fighting dogs and all this stuff. I'm not saying don't give them a chance, but after that, hey, you know what? You're done. Money's not that easy to come by. Trust me. I know for a fact. It was definitely unfortunate. And Dr. Jerry Punch, I, I couldn't even figure it out if it was directed exactly at Dr. Jerry Punch or Dr. Jerry Punch's producer who was holding the television uh, screen regardless it was unacceptable i've had some interaction with kurt when he ran pro stock at the gator nationals and he comes across as a as a, a good guy sometimes but that was definitely unacceptable as someone who's been in the media these guys are out there trying to earn a living they're doing their job they're bringing attention to the sport and the sponsors without the media the sport would go on but the spotlight would not be as big and as bright and the sponsors would not spend as much money so they are necessary i've got to tell you when I first started with R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company, I knew nothing about corporate people. I have a high school education. Obviously, from the title of this show, uh, we know what it is. The show yeah. sells, he says, so we know how I speak. But I had a gentleman by the name of Rob Goodman, who is actually the PR agent for Alanabi. And Rob and I were touring New Mexico to promote the race in Dallas, Texas, or somewhere. Anyway, we were on a media tour. We were going from media tour to media tour, radio station, TV station, blah, 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 blah. And everyone we were going to, they knew absolutely nothing about the drag races. So you'd go in there and they say, oh, how fast is your car go? Well, our car goes 300 miles an hour and a quarter mile. Well, okay, and blah, 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 blah. You know, do you farm goats or whatever? It, it was a joke. And it was so frustrating for me. And I told Rob Goodman, I said, you know, this is bullshit. Yeah. I don't know why we're doing this. I can't stand it. We need to go back. I'm done. I've had it, right? So Rob pulls over the car. He says, what do you mean? I said, well, these guys are a bunch of idiots. They don't know shit yeah. about our sport. We're wasting our time. They're wasting our, I'm wasting their time. It's just, it, it's crazy. And Rob says, well, how fast does your car go in zero to 60 feet? I said, well, it goes in less than a second and over a hundred miles an hour. He said, then why didn't you tell him that? You're the one making the mistake. You, it's your job to educate the media and let them know about our sport and what's so great about it. You know, our cars go zero to 60 feet in less than a second at over a hundred miles an hour. We reach g-forces of five and a half g's there's only two people that reach that kind of g's a fighter pilot or an astronaut okay you could lead that interview any way you want and you could throw in the times of qualifying the event and all the things to see and da 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 da, da if you know how to work it with one question asked from that media guy that doesn't know anything and if you do it right you're going to capture his uh, emotions and get his curiosity up to where the guy's probably going to want to go to to see a drag race so again i learned that back 14 years ago, 15 years ago, from a media guy that knew his business, used to call and say, hey, KMJ Radio, or, or, or I'm sorry, uh, um, ABC 30 or whatever. Did you get the B-roll on Gary Selzy? Oh, yeah, I got it. Okay, did you, did you watch it? Yeah, I watched it. Well, did you see where, where Gary raises turtles? Yeah, I saw that. Well, look, guy, he doesn't raise, raise, raise turtles. Can you please watch the video so when we come in, you got a little bit of knowledge of what we're talking about? You know what I mean? He would work it on his end, too, so... 
the PR guy knew how to work it. And so again, I've got years worth of knowledge in, in a couple of weeks just with Rob Goodman. And I played that to my favor as we went. And the media is our friends, guys. And I think the Bushes, they need to pull their heads out of their asses and get that figured out. Yeah, I think that you are absolutely correct. Rob has been very helpful with WFO Radio, and I don't know how Rob thinks of us talking about him, but, uh, you know, those PR guys, they like to stay behind the scenes. But it just, I think for every average fan out there, Gary, when you see someone who, frankly, let's be honest, they have unique skills and abilities, sure, but they are also blessed and fortunate to be able to do that in our world. And whenever you see one of them do what Kurt Busch did to Jerry Punch and his assistant, MFR, come on, that just says this person doesn't appreciate or understand how lucky they are. We got kids in Afghanistan crawling around in, this, in the muck and in the sand, and he's out there making millions of dollars driving a race car. It does seem a little out of touch. It does. It does. And now I'm going to tell you, on the other hand, sometimes it happens to fans because they're rude or do certain things or they're drunk, but not every fan is that way either. But you know what? If you've had 10 drunk fans grab you and attack you, it kind of sours you a little bit too. So, not not that it, not that it's okay to be rude to a fan. The fans are paying the seat, but you know there are a few of those fans that that get into your space and think just because they bought a ticket they own you too. So that's different than the media. Um, not that they should be treated any differently, but we do have some fans that um, that ruin it for the good fans. I might say. Understood. Absolutely understood. And you mentioned Tony Stewart a little bit earlier, a, a driver who. Uh, in the past, it had his own run-ins with the media and obviously has gotten older and matured. While we're talking, Gary, what, what did you think of his performance this past weekend? The man was possessed. I'm telling you, the determination on his face, and get an Academy Award for acting, he's that good and he's that focused. Years ago, um, Tony owned the World of Outlaw team that Danny Lasoski ran for years, and uh, Danny's a very close personal friend of mine to this day. And we were in Sedalia, Missouri, uh, and Tony had never driven a wing sprint car. And he was driving George Lasowski's 360 sprint car at a half-mile racetrack in Sedalia, Missouri. Tony came in and said, man, these things feel weird. And, and I watched Danny give him a tongue lashing on how to drive the car and what he was doing wrong. And uh, it was actually pretty comical to watch those two go back and forth. Tony had never sat in a wing car before and won the main event. Um, he could drive a late model. He can drive a wheelbarrow. He can drive anything. He's just absolutely amazing. And, uh, you, you know, to do what he's done, it's amazing. But Carl Edwards, on the other hand, you know, they're saying he is a very classy guy, and they're saying, oh, he just kind of knew he accepted defeat. He didn't accept defeat. That is one badass driver to, to boot. He didn't crash the car trying to beat Tony. He drove the car for all it was worth, and it wasn't enough. He finished second. Uh, my hat's off to both of them. To rise the occasion in the last three or four races like they did, they were the only show, amazed me. Um, but, Tony, um, you've done what I've known you could do all along, and I think you obviously know it too. It's just the guy was phenomenal. He put on a, a driving school like nobody's business. Next time you talk to your good friend Tony Stewart, why don't you encourage him to take Don Schumacher up on his offer to finally check the, the last box of cars that Tony has not driven a top fuel dragster. I know Tony wants to do it. Now that he's driven the Formula One car, that's been checked off the, the list. I know he's got a standing invitation to go drive one of those things. It would be great for NHRA to have Tony do it, and I'd love to see it, wouldn't you? Well, I know that Tony wanted to do it, but he doesn't want anybody around when he does it. So I, I don't know how show. that's going to work. I haven't talked to Tony about it, but I can tell you a few years ago, he did come to DSR when I was there and uh, showed him around when we had the old shop. And uh, Lasowski was on the phone and said, put him in the funny car and put the body on it. And we did, and he kind of popped out the roof because he's very claustrophobic. Regardless of what people think, a dragster is probably more claustrophobic than a funny car because you get down into that cockpit, you're strapped in, and the body is all close around you. Where the funny car, when the body comes down, you actually have a lot of room inside of it. Um, so it'll be interesting. If I talk to Tony here uh, in the next couple of weeks, I will talk to him and ask him about that be good for NHRA. Gary, great work as usual, my friend. You really uh, brought it this time. Happy holidays to everybody and you, Joe and, uh, and Bobby, for letting me do this. I appreciate it. I appreciate the fans. Kurt and Kyle Busch, you need to start doing that and the media. And uh, congratulations to all the NHRA champions. And, uh, man, I can't wait for next year. And, Alexis, uh, if I can help you in any way, darling, tell Dale. He'll give you my number, and, and we'll, uh, we'll definitely give you a few pointers.
He's Gary Selzy, a four-time NHRA champ. I'm Joe Costello, and this is the Shit Selzy Says.